Hi, just a follow up video on this quick 861DW hot air resoldering station. I'll link in the uh, previous video down below if you haven't seen it because this might not make much sense. Because uh, some people wanted me to uh, do some measurements um, on this thing. And uh, so let's have a quick look at that. But first of all, I wanted to clarify this is actually the DW model. And I actually got the spec which I overlaid on the previous video wrong. By default, the website was showing the DE model. And that's apparently a more powerful model that's 1200 watts as opposed to this thousand watt unit and it's also uh, the DE model is the 200 liter per minute airflow model this one's only 120 hence why if I actually take this out airflow if we actually go up its maximum is 120 so this is actually a direct readout in liters per minute which is quite nice so that's the DW model and it's the DE model that um, it goes up to 200 liters per minute. So that's just a clarification. So technically this actually has the same airflow, 120 liters per minute as the um, Aten slash whatever you want to, uh, what brand you want to call it goes under many brands, the 858DW. So does that mean that uh, you know, this is the same power as that. Well, no, because A, this one's a 1,000 watts uh, heater capability as opposed to uh, 700 watts for the Atan. But that's not the only difference. Um, the A lot of people say, well, if they're the same liters per minute and they're the same air, uh, the same heater power, they should be the same. Well, that's not the case. It's all about the, well, a good lot of it, that has an impact of course but a good lot of it will be to do with the um, internal element design and how they can actually transfer and the heat sink design in there and the heat fin design and how they can actually transfer as the heat blows out over the element how efficiently it can actually transfer from the element to the air and uh, so your better quality irons um, like this one the quick is definitely a better design and better quality iron than the Aten one um, and that's why its performance was roughly about double I got in the previous video and there's some people saying oh I didn't uh, use the current the same size nozzles and everything else and I was waving the antenna around too much and whatnot and that's going to have some impact but in all the testing I've done and some quite a bit of it was off camera uh, playing around with this thing uh, yes this is definitely the more capable iron than the Aten but you'd expect it um, it's just a better designed and a higher priced unit. I know price is not the only specification because Lewis Rossman of course has done uh, tests on this one and he says it outperforms the uh, the Heiko and the Weller. That costs like three times the price. So that'll have to do with, uh, you know, like I said, the design of the element and the air uh, fin attachments and stuff like that. And I've done a, actually a bit of uh, research, not in hot air guns, but uh, solar air heaters because I designed my own uh, solar air heater once and that was all an optimization uh, problem of so as you actually uh, push the air through the like this long circular snaking path of the solar air heater the more surface area it has to actually pick up the heat and if you've just got and if you have little fins inside there it's a more efficient again the more surface area you have but then it's a trade-off with uh, blocking the airflow and stuff like that it's actually quite uh, complicated how you can uh, transfer air moving air onto like thermal surfaces and the whole you know design of heat sinks with moving air flow in product design it actually is quite complicated and you know things like this are a, quite complicated if you get right down to them people think oh it's just an element and push some air through it there's a bit more engineering involved in that and sorry i can't take this one apart i don't want to uh, ruin it to show you uh, any you know the actual design inside maybe if we had a sacrificial one we could do that but it's got like rivets on there that prevent me doing that down in there but anyway yeah people think it's just an element and just a tube blowing a motor to blow some air through well no there's a bit more to it than that that decides its performance anyway um some people just wanted me to uh, measure the waveforms and stuff so let's take a quick look at that all right, so what I've got is my AIM uh, iProba 520. I've done a video on this. It's a very nice bit of kit. Um, it costs a bit of money, but uh, it's very nice. You can measure current uh, using the uh, clip-on toroidal attachment I've got here. We can actually just use it as a uh, oscilloscope clamp meter, basically to turn our scope into uh, a clamp meter to view the waveforms. And in this particular configuration, it gives out a, well, the amplifier in here, the sensor in the amplifier, give out a nominal uh, one volt volt 
per amp output. Um, so I've got that hooked into the scope here, and I've got this on the uh, primary side of the filter in there, but I've also uh, got a reference waveform captured from the uh, secondary side there of the filter. I think somebody in the comments said that this filter was wired wrong or something like that, but no, everything's on the secondary uh, side of the filter, like it goes into the heating element and stuff like that. Anyway, the problem with uh, Lewis's one that uh, it made the lights in his lab uh, flicker, and of course, um, the only you know, it's got a beautiful uh, common mode filter in there, so it can't be any like uh, conducted uh, RFI or something like that, so it's got to be. The, uh, the switching currents coming from the heating elements, and that would have to do with his, uh, the, you know, the wiring configuration, the phase configuration, mains phase configuration in his lab and uh, stuff like that. In fact, if this thing makes his lights flicker, I'm surprised that something else doesn't make them flicker too, because it's basically, as you saw in the teardown, it's just a triac in there, and it's just a basic triac switching circuit with an RC snubber across it, and then on top of that, we've got the uh, filter in there, but yeah, so anyway, it's got to be the actual uh, currents. All right, so let's actually check it out here. Now, I've actually uh, captured a reference uh, waveform here, and that's this uh, brown one here. It's, um, I'll show you in a sec, actually, a live uh, waveform, but I've captured that reference. That was on the um, secondary side of the filter, so that was basically uh, directly from the element and and you can see you know it's we've, it's a classic triac uh, type uh, switching arrangement um, and you'll see that these in, in this case we've got like a full cycle there and a full cycle there with a gap in between and of course that is if you have a look at uh, five milliseconds uh, per division that's 20 milliseconds across that's 50 Hertz of course because that's what uh, triac circuits do in the heating line in this particular case directly across the mains. So um, that's all the triac does is switch the heating element off and on either in full or uh, half cycles as we'll see. So I just captured that and we're at uh, two amps per divisions here. So two, four, six, it's almost eight amps peak. So that's actually um, pretty beefy stuff. Um, so let's actually have a look at a live one. I'll actually turn on the element. So now we have uh, the yellow waveform is our live waveform on the primary side. So this is what's actually going out into the mains. And I've turned it on. I've only got like a speed of uh, 10 uh, liters per minute here. So it's not much. And you can see that it's, um, if we, we can like single shot capture that, and you can see that we've actually got a, you know, sometimes it's a, uh, the, in this particular case, there's one and a half cycles there. Sometimes you'll only get, I think, I'm sure I've uh, seen, let me capture it again. Oh, there we go. So we've only got the half uh, cycle there. So the control algorithm has determined that, you know, it's it'll cycle this element off and on what it has to to keep to maintain the loop temperature that you've set it to, the set temperature on there, and that'll be based on the airflow as well. So if you have higher airflow, you'll actually uh, see that change. So let me, uh, maybe, let's go up, airflow up, and run it. So that's airflow at the moment. That's a 10, 50 litres per minute. Let's go up to 200. You can hear that, so we should actually get a few more cycles on there perhaps but uh, anyway and if we turn the airflow right back down probably shouldn't need as many there you go it shouldn't need as many to maintain in this particular case 400 degrees c and you can see that it's not doing much at all at the moment just very occasionally it'll uh, turn the element on and try and maintain that temperature so those current spikes so let's actually single shot capture that. So you can see that the filter's actually done a bit there. The amplitude is slightly less, probably, you know, and it's gonna take out any, uh, like, slightly higher frequency stuff, but I don't really, I've been playing around with this and I don't really see any high frequency uh, stuff in there. So maybe that uh, big, nice common mode filter that they've got in the back of this thing, maybe it's not needed at all, but uh, hey, you'd have to do a full broadband uh, compliance test and all that uh, sort of stuff but it's a very nice touch to have one in there but so a mains filter like this simply isn't going to uh, sort of like you know smooth all this out so that you don't get any transitions at all that's not how it works unfortunately it's only designed for your more high frequency stuff so yeah 
there you go. We have like um, eight amp, almost a well, no, coming from the mains. Let's call that uh, seven amp uh, peak. And this is for 240 volt mains. Yes, I do actually have 240 volts here in the lab. And you can see that the RMS current there is about, uh, you know, 2.6. I think it was going about uh, 3 amps RMS or so. So that gives us yeah, about, you know, a 700 watt capability, roughly. But, hey, we didn't, like, fully, like, turn the heater on the full way. Okay, let's have a look at the um, RMS uh, current here. If I try and ramp this right up. Here we go. I'll go up in temp. So it's on mostly, oh, four and a half. Did it reach 4.5 amps there? Something like that. Maybe four, four to four and a half. And of course, uh, four and a half amps, that's just over a thousand watts, a thousand and eighty or something. So, you know, like that's like basically meeting its spec in terms of uh, the thousand watt uh, heating element uh, capability in this thing. So as you can see, it's just not always uh, turning that element on and delivering the full power. It just needs to do it periodically to maintain the set temperature. So let's do the same for the um, AT10 and look, I mean, there's just no competition in the, <laughs> in the engineering between these two. Oh goodness. And of course this is a totally different beast because this actually uh, contains the motor inside here. It's not doing it uh, in the base unit like the uh, Quick and all of your other uh, professional ones do and have the hose coming over. Very different. And here we go, we've uh, got the Aten up and running. You can see peak currents considerably less. Let me turn it on and bingo, we get full sine wave. None of this uh, triac chopping rubbish. We get the full sine wave when it's hit temp. Hang on, much lower peak uh, power capability. So to get our uh, spec 700 watts, let's go here. It should be 2.9 amps. We're getting 2.6. You saw it there. Um, so this is not meeting its uh, rated 700 watt uh, capability. So there you go. I hope you found that little uh, follow up interesting there. And yeah, the at end of what was it getting 620 watts or something. You know, it's not grossly under its uh, rated 700 watt uh, capability, but the quick actually seemed to do, be doing maybe slightly, at least meets its uh, 1000 watt um, rating, heating element rating and uh, maybe slightly over so it's a genuine rating and it really I the quick is just a much better unit yes this kind of sort of you know does the job but as I said in the previous video if uh, you know the what the 200 say $200 uh, difference or $250 difference between these two and this one you have to put longer on your uh, particular device or your board that you're repairing and you screw that up and you're you know you could ruin you know a $500 job you could easily ruin you know $250 just gone bam like that so and anyway um i found the um actual catalog for the uh tips you can get for the quick as well and it's got uh, a huge range of them uh bga quad flat packs and all sorts of ones whereas the at is just yeah, a bit of a more of a toy i don't know you might be able to get some attachments for the at as well but uh, it's probably a whole bunch of uh you know third-party add-ons because this is actually sold under uh, you know dozens of different brands i don't actually know who the original equipment manufacturer is whether it's at hand or uh someone else i can't recall but so yeah the problem with uh lewis's flickering lights is basically um <laughs> is almost certainly i think the uh drawing the current from the uh triac just the switching uh triac peak currents but almost e uh, every large power uh you know device heating element type device on the market works in a similar triac switching way it does the same thing so you know where there could be something subtle in there you know causing these lights to flicker but if he probably puts on a separate uh, phase or something like that that might fix it some other filtering i don't know might fix it there might be other some other high frequency conducted or radiated uh, i don't think it's conducted because of that filter uh maybe there's you know um some radiated stuff being picked up in who knows what common mode things somewhere else it, it can like analyzing a problem like this can be real complicated you start by just uh isolating uh you know phases for one thing and so you know move it to a different circuit in, in the other part of the lab and uh stuff like that my lab for example uh one wall uses a different uh i don't know for whether or not it's a different phase but it's different definitely a different circuit to the other one so you try and just move stuff around like that as a first uh port of call but anyway hope you found that interesting and if you did please give it a big thumbs up catch you next time